Hey everyone, welcome back to The Crafty Couple. First of all, we want to thank all of you for your support on our channel. We know we haven't uploaded for a while. It's been a very rough start of this year and we've had a lot of things going on. So thank you so much for sticking with us. We are excited though to get back into the craft. So we will be getting back with these regular uploads. Things seem to be getting better for us. So again, thank you so much. And if you guys enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up. Let us know in the comments which project's your favorite. And let's jump in and get started. So to start off, this is just a like a wood display, raw wood from Hobby Lobby that you could make a sign on or paint and then hang it up. It has some hangers on the back. We got this for a little over $6. Normally it was like almost $30 for this whole thing. So we knew we had to pick it up. And what we're gonna be doing here is taking these wood pieces apart because all we want are the four wood pieces that are nailed to the back here. So I'm just using a screwdriver and a hammer to kind of pry this apart. And then that way we're gonna have all of these uh, individual pieces of wood. And it really wasn't that difficult. Just use kind of a bigger screwdriver there if you find something like this and you can hammer it in to wedge it in and then you can just move it back and forth to pry that off. Again, those are the little hangers that are on the back, so we will definitely save those for this project. Now, these are also from Hobby Lobby. These are some little hangers. These were normally $4, but of course, they always have those 50% off sales, so we got these for $2 each. So right now, the wood pieces, each of them came out to be a little over a dollar if we divided the total cost throughout the four individual pieces and then we have the three hangers. So right now we're two, four, six, a little over $7 and then we're gonna be using um, just some of these little screws from Walmart to screw these into place. And then of course, what we wanna do is go ahead and spray paint these. I'm just using this gold from Rust-Oleum to spray paint the tops. Now, something that works really easy, if you ever need to spray paint little pieces or some screws like this, we just like to take them and stick them into some foam here. That way it holds them upright and you can spray the tops of those really easily. Next, we wanna try and get everything lined up as good as we can. So what I'm doing is measuring the total length here of the wood piece. And then what I wanna do is find the center. That's where I'm gonna place my first hook is right in the center. And then from there, we will measure out an equal distance to place our other two hooks. So this is gonna be a really easy way to kind of get these lined up and create an equal distance in between each of them as well. And then when you're doing this, just make sure that you're measuring the same distance. So I'm doing the inside edge on both of these from the center and then to the outside hook. What you wanna avoid, cause sometimes you can do this if you measured like the inside edge to the outside edge, that's gonna throw it off a little bit. So just make sure you're measuring the same distance on each side. Now, if you have a drill, I would recommend drilling some holes first. It'll make it easier for your screws to go in and then you avoid any kind of splitting of the wood. You don't necessarily have to, but then you always run the risk, especially if you're using bigger screws and they're closer to the edge of the wood, you run the risk of splitting the wood. So if you have it, I would definitely drill those holes first. And then I'm gonna drill and screw in this middle hook first before I do the other ones. You don't have to do it this way. I just like doing it so that I know that's for sure in the right place. And then if for some reason I end up bumping the wood or one of the hooks slides a little bit, I can remeasure off of that middle hook and it's screwed down so it's nice and secure and I don't have to worry about my measurements getting messed up. Um, I don't know about you guys, sometimes I'm clumsy and I can hit things. So I like to have that middle reference nice and solid and then I can just make sure my measurements are equal for the other hooks. And then I'll go ahead and drill those and screw those down. And it's a really easy project. Um, like I said, you're not quite eight dollars on this but i think the finish look is super high end really modern and you're getting that look for only a few dollars that's what i love about doing this we we love the dollar tree stuff but when you can make something really really nice for just a few dollars by using a little bit nicer quality materials that's always a win And even though Hobby Lobby has some really good deals on some of these hooks, I think $2 a piece on these is really good. We've looked a little bit on Amazon and we've found some poles and hooks that you can get for 
right under a dollar, right around a dollar up to a couple, depending on like the size and quality. So we definitely want to check those out. If you guys have ordered pulls or hooks on Amazon, let us know how you thought the prices were and then also the quality. That's one thing we're just not sure on. So let us know if you guys thought the quality was really good on those Amazon pieces. Now this next part, I'm going to be using those hooks that were originally on this. And you don't want to put them right at the top because then you could run the risk of like a screw or a nail sticking out the top. So I'm just measuring down an inch on both sides and then I'm going to line up the very top of this hook right on that mark so that I know that both sides are going to be hanging at an inch down from the top. And then that way when I put in my nail or screw, they're going to be nice and even. For this project, I'm going to be using another piece of wood from that palette that he showed you a little bit earlier in the video, and I'm going to be using these pencil holders from Dollar Tree. I know you've probably seen similar crafts on TikTok. I don't know who the original creator is, so if you do know them, please just comment down below. But what I'm going to be doing is using these as like plant holders on this piece of wood. I am going to be cleaning them because we do have dogs and this kind of plastic from Dollar Tree always just static everything attaches to it. So I clean them off and then I'm going to be spray painting it with the Rust-Oleum Gold Spray Paint. This is how they look when they're finished. I do think that it could have looked a little bit better. I noticed there was a crack in the very bottom one, but it'll be okay because we'll cover it with a plant. But the spray paint doesn't stick very well to this kind of plastic. I had to do about three coats to get that look. Before we glue those on, we're just going to be using this sawtooth hanger on the back so that we can hang it up. If you decide to do this project, just find the middle of the piece of wood that you are using and draw a little dot, and then you're going to want to measure it the other way as well. Find the middle and draw another dot so that's your center. I wasn't 100% sure at the beginning how I was going to attach it, so you can use little nails and put them where that suction cup was if you want to use like real plants and you want to take it off to water it. I would add like a drainage hole or something like that at the bottom just so that it doesn't get like the root rot or anything. So you can use little nails to attach it like you see here. I'm personally just going to glue it on because it's easier, faster, and I'm not going to be putting real plants in there. So you can do hot glue and E6000. It really doesn't weigh a lot, so I'm just going to be using hot glue. Once I had the middle one right where I wanted it, I'm going to be measuring the other spot. So it, I had eight inches left, so it's going to be four inches in the middle. And then this time I measured how big the pencil holder was. So it's about six and a half inches. Half of that is three and a quarter. So put your tape measure right where three and a quarter is, where that dot was, and then just draw a line where six and a half inches is, and then where the start of the tape measure is, and that will show you exactly where it needs to go. That was the easiest way that I could find out to kind of make sure it was in the middle and they all looked even. If you're only using one, you could honestly just eyeball it. I did three, and so you could definitely tell if one was off. And then the width was four inches, so I'm going to be putting the tape measure at two inches where the little dot is, and then just drawing the line at four inches and then the start of the measuring tape. And then I'm just going to be hot gluing this one on as well. The only thing you have to really keep in mind is when you are gluing this on, try and make sure that the line where you would put uh, like plant in is even with the wood so one's not like slightly crooked.
For the plants, I'm going to be using an air plant and a succulent that I got from, I believe it was Walmart, and then this plant I got from Ikea. And this is the finished project. Please let me know what you guys think in the comments below. So the first thing that I want to do for this tray is find the middle of the board. We're going to use that as a reference point when we're laying down our tape for our design. So it's really important that we have a few different points on this project that we can reference and make sure that everything is lining up. So the first thing is finding that middle point and then I'm just going to measure in a few different spots and then put some marks on there and then use a ruler to draw a straight line down the middle. Now that we have that center line, we want to make a few points on the outside edges of our wood. And this is totally going to depend on the size of wood you have and the design that you want to do. So for mine, I just measured out a couple inches. And the main thing that you want to remember here is that you're doing the same exact measurement on both sides. So whether that's two inches, five inches, 10 inches, whatever it is, just make sure that on those outside edges, they're the exact same. And then what we're going to do is make a point on this center line. So if you measured out two inches on the edges, on the center, you want to go a little bit further. So you want to look and see how far, if you want this line to extend really far out, then obviously you want to add more and more inches. But if you just want a little bit of an angle, you can add maybe an inch or two. So what we want to do is make that point in the center and then we have the two points on the edge. And essentially all we're doing is connecting the dots from the edge to the center. Now that we have the main shape, we can use that as reference when taping. So all I'm going to do is grab some tape and follow those lines that we just drew to mark this off. And that is going to be our first gap. So we don't want any paint to get in here. So we're just going to line that up and then trim where we need to. Now that we have the top taped off, we can move on to the side now. If you wanted to and you had a long enough piece of tape, you could take that and just fold it over and run it down the side of the wood. But what that's gonna do, when you fold it, it's actually gonna come across the side at an angle and I wanted mine to come straight down. So I cut it at the edges and then I'm gonna mark some points here that I can just line up the tape and tape that down. And then you will need a couple pieces of tape to fill that in. As you can see, it's a little bit thicker than just the one piece. So you'll want to grab another piece here and then just overlap those. And that way you can have that full coverage and it'll line up exactly with the design going across the top. Okay, now that we have our first line of tape, what we want to do is add another strip here. And essentially this is going to be removed and painted. So the first part where we have bare wood, that's going to be painted white. And then we'll have a layer of tape that we don't want any paint to get on. The reason why we're putting this here is so that we have an even gap and it's the same size as our 
wood. So you can see here, I'm trimming it to look exactly like the design. And then I will lay down another layer of tape. And this is the one that will actually be covered that we don't want any paint to get on. And then I'll go ahead and remove that strip that's in between these. And that's the part that will be painted. And then to finish this design, we're just gonna do the same thing that we just did. We're gonna add a layer of tape for the gap. And then once we have that laid down and cut, we'll add another one and then remove that one in the middle. And that's just a really easy way to get the same size gaps for the wood and the paint and you don't have to do any measurements at all. Once we have that all taped off, we can move on to painting. And one thing we've been doing a little bit of is some furniture flipping. And we really wanted to try this Dixie Bell Silk Paint. This is a mineral paint that's got the top coat and primer built in. This is the color White Cap. So we're excited to use it. Hopefully we enjoy it as much as some of the other paints we use. Let us know in the comments if you have used this paint and what you think. So all I'm gonna be doing here is adding a couple coats of the white paint. And once we have full coverage on our wood with the paint, we can remove the tape. Now, one thing with the tape, I would not recommend leaving it to completely dry. Sometimes when that happens, it's harder to remove the tape and then also it can peel up some of the paint. So you want it to still be a little bit wet when you're removing that tape. It makes it just a little bit easier for you. And then again, the satisfaction of revealing those designs is always a fun part of these projects. Also, one thing I wanted to mention when I was painting, when you're painting around the tape, try and paint away from the tape or um, along the side of the tape. Don't paint into the tape because then you run the risk of some of that paint being pushed underneath the tape. So always paint away or kind of along with the tape if you can. Now the last part here is to add some handles and these I believe we got for Walmart and the individual price ended up being a little over $3. I think it was a pack of six for about $20. So I think this is one that you could definitely get a better price on Amazon more around the dollar range, but we already had these. So I wanted to uh, put them to use and to line these up and make sure that these are going to look really good. We want to find a few different points on our board. So when we're doing any kind of measurements over the painted part here, what I recommend and a really easy way to do this is just add some tape over the top there. That way you can mark the tape, you can drill holes, and you don't have to worry about marking up your paint and trying to erase it or anything like that. So the first thing that we wanna do is find the center point of this board. That's going to allow us to measure the proper distance when installing our handles. So the handles that I have are three inches. Now that's not the total distance of the handle. That's a three inch distance from screw to screw where this will go into the board. So once we have that center point, what we wanna do is measure out on each side an inch and a half. So we do an inch and a half to the right, an inch and a half to the left. That will give us the equal distance for where our screws need to go and it will be perfectly centered as well. Now this next part is just preference. This is how far in you want your handle. So I did mine at an inch, but if you want to do it further in or out, you can definitely do that. And then where that point meets the other point that we made is where we would want to drill our holes. And if you don't have a drill or if you don't want to drill, you could use E6000, but you'd probably want to try and remove some of that paint so that it would actually adhere to the wood and not just the paint itself. Now, once we have that drilled, we can go ahead and fit our screw in there. 
But what that's going to do is once we slide the screw in, the actual head of it is going to be sticking down below the wood. So we don't want that to be sticking out at all. We want it to be flush or even in just a little bit. So you don't have to worry about that scraping anything or kind of rocking or being uneven. So a quick fix for that is just to get a drill bit that's going to be about the size of that head, just a little bit bigger and then drill in a little ways on the wood. You don't wanna go all the way through because we don't need that big of a hole. And then that way the screw would just go all the way through. We just wanna drill in the wood a little ways so that it will be flush with the wood or just inside a little bit. And that way you don't have to worry about anything poking up from the bottom. Now that we have those drilled, we can add our screws and our handles, and it might seem like a little bit more in depth of a project, but really it's so simple. I know a lot of you are probably used to just the simple Dollar Tree projects with some hot glue, but I'm sure you guys notice just as we do, a lot of those don't hold up or you have to be really careful with them or they could break. And we just wanted to do some higher quality stuff. And the thing that I love about these projects is they're still only a few dollars but they're gonna hold up and they're gonna look really, really nice in your home. So if you love this style of stuff where all you really need is a few tools and you can make some really pretty stuff, let us know in the comments because we've really been enjoying doing some of these nicer things. Still gonna do some Dollar Tree stuff and mix it in with these higher end uh, pieces, but we do like using some nicer materials. So let us know in the comments what you think. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. It's super simple and in the end, I think it looks absolutely stunning. We got these really cool kind of modern looking candle holders from a thrift store for only $4.50 for the both of them and we thought that was such a great deal. So what we're going to be doing is cleaning them up and sanding them and repainting them to kind of give it a very modern almost West Elm look. For all our thrift store projects, we use a degreaser just to kind of get, there's usually like sticky stuff and grime on it. So you'll want to wipe all that off also fingerprints when you spray paint on top of that it will make the project look extremely just kind of icky since this is wood or at least the outside part is wood i'm going to be using 220 grit and sanding down the whole thing it just kind of had a little bit of a film and we want it to look very smooth and perfect i would recommend doing this on any projects that you have that are wood or even some plastics to just let the spray paint adhere to it and give it a very smooth look. Once that was wiped down, I went ahead and did the larger candle holder and then we're going to be spray painting it. We were both wondering if you guys wanted kind of a tutorial on how to spray paint. We do get a lot of comments about how does our spray paint look good and how does it stick so well. So we'd love to do a video like that in the future. Just let us know in the comments. And this is how they look finished. I think this is definitely my style and I really, really love how it turned out. I decided to use these candles. I don't really love like the thin ones. Thanks for watching guys. We hope you enjoyed today's video. If you wanna see more high-end DIYs like this, make sure to click through right here to our playlist and you can check out some other amazing videos. As always, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can be notified every time we upload a new video.